The Mercedes CL is an exquisitely finished two-door Grand Tourer with an unusual and rather refreshing reluctance to attract attention that sets it apart in a luxury coupe market filled with flamboyance. It may be based on the familiar S-Class saloon, but it's a beautifully built automobile with a unique appeal, well able to justify a six-figure price tag. Plus, there's enough technology to make the Pentagon's IT department feel inadequate. If your car matters more than the statement it makes, then the CL's understated elegance will be a tempting alternative to Bentleys and Maseratis, better suited to footballers and lottery winners. Drive one, and you'll probably see why. So you've succeeded in life, but there's still a distance to travel. A distance you'd like to cover without undue fanfare, but in exquisite comfort. The style of a luxury coupe appeals, but the brash vulgarity of a Bentley Continental or Maserati GT, well, it just doesn't. Now, assuming that you'd like something a bit nicer and more luxurious than a Jaguar XK or a BMW 6 Series, that leaves only one car on your choice list. This one, Mercedes improved C216 Series CL Class. For well over half a century, Mercedes has bought us an uninterrupted series of exclusive two-door coupes, combining sophisticated design with trailblazing technology. Every one an automotive classic. Take the 220 SE of 1961, one of the first cars to be equipped with disc brakes, or the S600 Coupe of 1999, the very first to feature ESP stability control. Its successor, the CL Class, showcased an active body control system that transformed the way that cars of this size could handle, a system further refined when this second generation CL Class was introduced in 2007. By mid-2010 though, with lesser cars matching the myriad of technology that once set this one apart, and running costs looking decidedly out of kilter with Stuttgart's eco-conscious ideals, updates were needed and delivered by the improved version that we're looking at here. So, take a seat behind the wheel. It's a beautifully comfortable place to be. You're surrounded by handcrafted wood and leather, of course, but not in the ostentatiously pretentious way of some rivals. Fire the engine of this CL500 model into life, and you're rewarded by the kind of purposeful burble that you only get from a carefully tuned petrol V8. And that's exactly what's on offer here. In the original version of this second generation CL class model, you had to stretch up to the stratospherically priced uh, V12 and AMG models to get Bentley Continental GT class performance. But with this improved CL500, the 0 to 60 sprint time of 4.9 seconds is just a few tenths away, not only from the Bentley rival, but also from the AMG model stablemates. Quite simply, at any revs, in any gear, this car just flies. Just as importantly, it feels utterly effortless as you glide unnoticing through the perfectly spaced ratios of the seven speed automatic gearbox. Turbo lag almost completely absent and refinement peerless. Too peerless in fact if you're one of those people that really likes to hear the engine. If that's the case you'd probably be better off buying a Maserati. This in contrast is one of those cars designed to lower its driver's heartbeat rather than raise it. From which you'll probably gather that uh, twisting B roads aren't its preferred habitat which is true up to a point. Show this car the outside lane of an autobahn, and before you can say crikey, you'll be in Dusseldorf. But that's not to say that it can't handle uh, twisting secondary B roads in its stride if the need arises. And the reasons for that are as simple as ABC. The letters stand in this case for active body control, an active suspension system that not only regulates body roll, but also pitching and squatting movements as well. Uh, achieving a perfect harmony between comfort and handling stability. Now having introduced this system on the previous generation CL class, the Sindelfingen engineers further refined it on this Mark II model, uh, reducing the already negligible body roll by as much as 60%. Then they further refined it again on this improved version, introducing a crosswinds stability system. 
Now the result is that whatever the conditions, even in tight corners, this car hardly rolls at all. It's, it's almost eerie. Uh, further aids to those uh, instances when you really can't avoid press on driving include a direct steer system that uh, senses when you need a bit more steering feel and automatically weights the helm accordingly and a torque vectoring brake system that can selectively brake individual rear wheels to aid turn in really sharp bends and improve stability. If all this technology makes you yearn for more power to exploit it fully, then there's a special order only 517 brake horsepower CL600 V12 model that uses much the same twin turbo uh, 6 litre engine that you'll also find in the flagship CL65 AMG. Though in that car, the AMG tweaks mean that it puts out an awesome 621 brake horsepower which is still not enough to make it significantly faster than the 536 brake horsepower V8 CL63 AMG model that costs around £45,000 less. Uh, all AMG and V12 models sprint to 60 in about four and a half seconds and every CL class variant is artificially restricted to a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Yes, any CL class model is essentially a two-door coupe version of the S-Class luxury saloon, but that doesn't mean it can't have its own personality. Now, in the case of this revised second generation model, the aesthetics are even more distinct, the designers having subtly reworked everything from the windscreen forward. So the body panels and the headlights with their trendy daytime running lamps are even sleeker, as is the bonnet and the more dynamic V-shaped front grille. Now it all artfully disguises the fact that at over 5 metres long, nearly 2 metres wide and over 2 tonnes in weight, this is a serious piece of automotive real estate. Now at least that means that the CL can offer something unusual in most coupe models, namely a proper space for two fully sized adults to get comfortable in the back. All kinds of lovely details mean that even long journeys should be possible. Uh, provided that the occupants aren't of basketball playing stature. At the wheel, it's as beautifully built and appointed as any Bentley, virtually all handcrafted with four different types of wood used and the choice of two different kinds of leather. The little touches impress too, like headlamps that illuminate further as you go faster, doors which electronically stay at whichever point they're open to, and an electrically opening boot lid. Now, talking of the boot, though the back seats don't fold down to extend it, you do get this hidden underfloor compartment for valuables. And the space itself is only a little less than you get in a, an S-Class uh, saloon. There's 490 litres here rather than the S-Class is 560. And the space is well-shaped, long, wide and deep, easily enough for several sets of golf clubs. Now, though in theory the CL class has something of a unique appeal, it's equally clear that the marketeers at Mercedes-Benz have looked closely at what competitors have to offer, um, specking and pricing this car accordingly. Now, the key here has been in upping the power of this CL500 variant. That's the one that, not surprisingly, most customers choose. When the second generation CL was first launched in 2007, after all, this version uh, was priced at much the same level as its closest rival, Maserati's GT 4.7 V8S automatic, yet offered a lot less power. Now with that put right, thanks to the 435 PS that now resides under the bonnet, uh, that's virtually identical to the Italian car then uh, Mercedes are back on equal terms, offering a more luxurious but perhaps slightly less sporting package. The CL600 V12 and AMG-tuned CL63 and CL65 models, meanwhile, are directly targeted at Bentley's Continental GT. The CL63, with its V8, develops uh, 544 PS and is priced at somewhere between 115 and 120,000 pounds. That's depending on how you spec the car. Now it gives away just 16 PS to the Bentley Continental, yet costs uh, 20,000 pounds less. 
the CL600V12 and the AMG tuned CL63 and CL65 models, meanwhile, are directly targeted at Bentley's Continental GT. Now, the CL63 is a V8 model that'll cost you somewhere between 115 and 120,000 pounds, depending on how you spec it. And it gives away just 16 PS to a Bentley Continental GT, yet will cost you 20,000 pounds less. The CL65, meanwhile, is a V12 that costs uh, at around the 160,000 pound price point. That's 10,000 pounds less than the Bentley Continental Supersports, which shares the same 630 PS output. Now, a CL65 AMG is without doubt an awesome machine, but it isn't worth 70,000 pounds more than this CL500. Now, whichever engine you choose for your CL, the uh, 4.7 litre V8 of this CL500, the 5.5 litre V8 of the CL63 AMG, or the 6 litre V12 of the CL65 AMG, or the CL600, you'll find that your car will come sumptuously equipped to a level befitting a six-figure asking price. Options include a Harman Kardon surround sound stereo with DAB digital radio and a 7.2 gigabyte hard disk music server. Also, there's a split view screen that allows different content to be viewed by driver and front seat passenger. So for example, the driver can view sat nav instructions while the front seat passenger views a DVD movie. Neat. As you'd expect, there's all the uh, basic executive amenities, things like wood and leather, climate control, Bluetooth, electric seats, every safety system under the sun. But then you get all of that in a cheaper Jaguar XK or BMW 6 Series. Now, what sets this car apart is the way that it comes absolutely stuffed with technology. As with any of Mercedes' flagship models, this one must showcase the kind of features that humbler motorists will find on their cars in five or 10 years time. Things like adaptive headlight assist, where the headlamps automatically dip at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Night vision assist plus, basically infrared night vision able to pick out pedestrians. Speed limit assist, which identifies speed limits as you pass and displays them. Distronic plus, proximity cruise control, which consistently keeps you a safe distance to the car in front on the motorway, and attention assist, which identifies driver drowsiness through your body language or through your steering behavior. Now, all of these are features still filtering their way down into more affordable sections of the market. In adding to these, this revised CL class model's optional headline features don't at first glance appear to be that groundbreaking. Uh, lane keeping assist essentially there to keep dozy drivers from veering out of their, their lanes on the highway. Uh, or blind spot assist which stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car. These are features already seen on much cheaper vehicles. But in adding an active element to both of these, this CL uh, is able to take matters into its own hands. Rather than simply warning you of the problem, it can take avoiding action if you don't respond or haven't time to. And that, of course, could make all the difference. The blue efficiency badging of this CL500 model isn't just there for show. Ditching the old 5.5 litre V8 that was previously fitted in this car in favour of a smaller 4,663cc bi-turbo V8 has had a huge impact in terms of both uh, fuel consumption and emissions. Blue Direct Direct Injection works in concert with energy efficient control of everything from the fuel pump to the alternator, from the air conditioning compressor to the power steering system. Plus there's an eco stop start system that's able to cut the engine when you don't need it, when you're waiting at the lights or you're stuck in heavy traffic. Now the result of all this is an improvement of 23% in fuel consumption, meaning that in theory at least, you could achieve almost 30 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle in this CL500. And in terms of emissions, there have also been improvements, though not enough to get you a place on the Greenpeace Christmas card list, given that this car still chugs out a not inconsequential 224 grams per kilometre of CO2. Though there have been also running cost improvements visited upon the AMG and V12 CL models, 
be frank, a lot less effort has been put in here to keep costs down. The uh, Stuttgart engineers assuming that buyers with between 120 and 170,000 pounds to spend really won't care. To be fair, the CL63 AMG doesn't do too badly, managing 26.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and spewing out 244 grams per kilometre of CO2. But the big V12 that you'll find in the uh, CL65 AMG and the CL600 really is very planet unfriendly. In the CL65 AMG it manages just 19.8 miles to the gallon and puts out 344 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now residual values aren't really a CL strong point though, and though they're a bit better than they used to be you'll need to factor that into your running cost calculations. This isn't a car that rewards people who merely want to keep it for a year and then move on. But as a long-term ownership proposition, it makes a lot more sense. Insurance groupings are, as you might expect, a top-of-the-shop group 50 for all variants. Now, before living with this car, I was, I must admit, a little sceptical about its charms. After all, if you've earned enough to pretty much buy a Bentley, isn't it logical to simply go ahead and buy one rather than opting for what critics would see as a coupe version of a mere £60,000 luxury saloon? But this CL class is more than that, a super luxury Grand Tourer with its own unique appeal. Now to me it only makes sense in this much improved CL500 guise where on paper at least it offers virtually everything that you get in a Bentley Continental GT for nearly £50,000 less. At the wheel of this Mercedes-Benz, you sail close to the summit of automotive refinement in a car that combines fascination, perfection and responsibility in equal measure. Bentley and Maserati buyers want to be noticed. CL-class customers don't need to be, which in its own way, I think, like this car, makes them more exclusive still.